I'm Ezra Raya reporting on the hottest issues and the biggest stories. This is the Manila Times. A major labor group was gravely disappointed at the recent approval of the 40 pesos increase in the daily minimum wage. The new wage rate for Metro Manila in the non-agricultural sector is 610 pesos. The same increase is also given to those in the agricultural, service, retail, and manufacturing sectors and will receive 573 pesos base wage. The Trade Union Congress of the Philippines described it as too little and too late. Now let's hear from the business owner's side of the story. Here with us is Employers Confederation of the Philippines, ECO President Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr. Welcome to the Manila Times, sir. Sir, what is the impact of the 40 pesos wage increase on all businesses, especially the micro and small businesses, sir? Can all companies afford this? In the past, we've been saying, uh, so long as the process is uh, the correct process and the venue, uh, we will support it. Uh, and uh, this is the tripartite way it's word. And uh, it is not a perfect way because really the, the best way really is to, to collect a bargaining agreement to increase uh, wages. Now, unfortunately, there's very few unionized or with collective bargaining agreement in the country. So the government had to intervene. Minimum wage basically is an entry-level wage for uh, new graduates uh, or those from at age. But in the Philippines, uh, we have been using it as the minimum wage to protect all, 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 all sorts of employees. Huh? So, uh, and... Uh, uh, we would like to be cl to clarify, minimum wage uh, or the salary wage is not the same as the living wage. Uh, you know, some people are saying that even an organization which says na families cannot live on one thousand on less than one thousand one hundred uh, uh, a day. You know, and so people assume that that is the request for minimum wage. That is. A living wage, living wage, living wage is uh, actually bigger than one thousand one hundred uh, because uh, a living wage includes if there is more than one working in the family that's part of the living wage. If uh, there's other income like a, a small truck of land or garden where they can raise chicken, pigs, uh, vegetables, and sell it, that's part of the living wage earning. Uh, all the support of the government is giving in education, uh, health uh, uh, support. Those are part of the big. That is the one that uh, uh, where family of four or five uh, depends on. And that is certainly not a living wage. So how did we arrive at the 40 pesos? And I, I ask our representation uh, because uh, in the wage world, the employers are represented, so it's the workers, and so are the DTI, DOLE, NEDA. Because basically, what uh, companies do is uh, uh, when there is a mandated wage, uh, they have three choices. Those who cannot afford it, uh, what they will do is uh, they put it on over their products, you know, so pass it on to the consumer. Uh, if if the market will still allow it, no. If not, they they retrain some of their workers so that they can afford, no. Uh, because you re remember, mandated wage has nothing to do with their sales, with their income, no. It is just mandated. So they, and if they cannot do that, some especially this, the micro ones, they just decide to close down. So you know, in a, that that is what you're trying to avoid, or at least the ways we're trying to avoid. You know, they they're trying to balance this out now. So again, let me go back. Many of these micro enterprises uh, cannot even the last two years cannot even afford to pay thirteen month pay, and facilities have to be offered to them so that they will be encouraged to pay the thirteen month pay. Now. Uh, many of them will be relying on government to help them out. No? There is an exception, uh, I think, for one year, uh, and those who are qualified, I hope 
or we hope uh, the government can make the process of exception easy because if they still have to hire pro lawyers, accountants, uh, some people will just bother, they'll just close down. No? So we hope it's easy. Anyway, one year exemption, after one year, the inflation will project to be 4%. They might be able to afford it already, these 40 pesos. But now, some of them can't afford it. In the informal market, uh, it is 84% of our workers, of the 52 million in the labor uh, force that is in the uh, informal sector, they they have no uh, they have no employers, uh, uh, and who are who are these? Most of the farmers, uh, fisher folks, mga market vendors, mga tricycle drivers, jeepney drivers, uh, small business, uh, family business, a eighty four percent. There's eighty four percent. Of the, you know, and uh, if there is a an towards increase, uh, as I said, uh, there will be partly cause some some inflation. Kung malaki, talaga inflationary yan, uh, Central bank, uh, for instance, I think calculated, if there is an increase of uh, more than one hundred pesos, uh, uh, it, it will it will translate to increase in uh, in inflation of 1.8%, almost 2%, uh, and that is high. And uh, so everybody will suffer, but the informal sector, they have nothing to draw on because the the the, the harvest will increase because you increase minimum wage. The fish cuts will not increase because you increase minimum wage. So they will be the ones put in disadvantage Initially, it was 750 pesos across the board wage hike from the lower house. And then it was followed by 150 pesos hike in the Senate. And now mm. we came up with 40 pesos and it's only for Metro Manila, sir. You, know? you came up with a 40 pesos wage increase um, with the small and micro businesses in mind. But you believe that the medium, the large uh, companies can uh, shoulder the 40 pesos wage increase because they will just pass it on the product or services that they no, will be selling. Uh, all of them will pass it on. All uh, of them, even the micro and small businesses. Uh, yes. Uh, but the, pass it on to the, the end consumer. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the medium and large one probably are paying much, much more than the minimum wage anyway. And their benefits are superior. So... So they they prob this will probably not even affect them, uh, because uh, they're over it. Uh, sir, uh, I'm just it sir, sir, what, uh, would you agree? Uh, would you agree with the uh, abolishment of contractual workers? I I I I think you have to distinguish. Uh, your security of tenure uh, before they said that uh, President Duterte promise to end contractualization. No. That is not exactly what Mr. Duterte said. What Mr. Duterte said is he does not like yung five by five, tsaka yung endo, yung five months, five months, then it never become permanent. So last, the other year, they passed already a, a, a what, that uh, everybody who works for six months, even cumulative six months, are permanent workers. There is already a security of tenure. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, many people say, well, organized labor say, in the sufficient but that's not possible. Because uh, contract, uh, there, are some, so, there are some sort of uh, contractualization that have been abused in the past. You buy, 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 you know. But uh, contractualization is a worldwide practice. If you take it away, you will not be competitive because that's what uh, they do. Unfortunately, they do not like the, even if everybody becomes permanent, uh, uh, there is a, uh, they do not like uh, that uh, the, the, they will be permanent with the subcontractors. 
would you be open for another wage increase? Because according to the Wage Rationalization Act, the imposed min da daily minimum wage will not be disturbed for a year. So, but the people, the labor union said that they were they will be fighting for another minimum wage increase. So, would you be would you agree with that with another increase in the coming well, year? Well, so, so long as it so long as it passes uh, uh, in the the process the process. Huh? an objective process like the wage board. And even if they wish that they, even if we are agreeing, hey, get on, that's that's still the number that will come out because that is the number that has basis. Uh, the the ones that we've been fighting, a lot of basis, you know, uh, it's uh, politicized. So in total, again, there is a basis. And, you know, uh, 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 Represented sila doon. Represented sila doon. Although officially outside, uh, they, they, will, they will still say, you know, unacceptable. No. But basically, uh, nobody walked out this time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, sometimes we walk out also because uh, we find that uh, hindi tama yung ginagawa, no? Or we, but this time I, I I'm not aware that they walked out. I think uh, uh, what they do there in the you know, they, they, they process the numbers cannot lie. That is there. When you say that the erosion is thirty pesos, that's thirty pesos because there are formulas. There is a you know scientific way of calculating it. But the, subjectively, you can say erosion is 500 pesos, the obos. Uh, you can even say that uh, what they are receiving now is only one third of what they should be receiving. You can say anything. But the fact is, meron ba basis yan talaga? That is uh, objective. Sir, uh, let me clarify po, no? So the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines is happy with a 40 pesos wage increase. Is that correct? And uh, what do you say to those groups who are... No, I, I, we, we are not saying we're happy. We're saying we live with it. There are coming yeah. members that probably are uh, are also uh, cursing me now because they, they have been calling us even before the... the na uh, baka malaki yung ano. Uh, although, uh, what I'm saying is, most of our members, uh, we can persuade. We will support it. Ano? But uh, since yung our non-members, yung mga micro, eh, the government should help because we know many of them can't afford it. Thank you so much for your insights. Employee Scrum Federation of the Philippines President, Mr. Sergio Ortiz Luis Jr. Maraming salamat po, sir. Thank you, Ezra, and uh, to our listeners and watchers uh, for the time given to us. Thank you, sir.